15 Heinous and Beastly Bugs from Starship Troopers, explained in detail. Starship Troopers might seem like your average action-packed sci-fi flick, but underneath the apparent narrative, it is so much more. Since it was released in 1997, this gem of a movie by Paul Verhoeven has achieved cult status among the fans. The initial bashing from the critics was because many failed to understand the social commentary that lay within the gratuitous violence and mediocre acting performances. Don't do your job, I'll kill you myself. Do you get me? We get you, sir! After much analysis over the years, people have grown to understand Verhoeven's subtle warning of a dystopian future that awaits us if the world continues to function as it does today. The movie was adapted from a sci-fi novel by the same name by Robert A. Heinlein. But the novel was often criticized for promoting fascism. The film version, on the other hand, is completely opposed to any kind of dictatorship or military leadership, condemning these ideologies through well-constructed satire. Corporal, you're it until you're dead, or till I find somebody better. It has often been stated that much like Verhoeven's previous movies such as Robocop, Starship Troopers was just another criticism of the U.S. militarism. It is said that through the stylistic choices, like the use of Nazi-style uniforms, the director has tried to drive home the hard-hitting reality of where the U.S. might be headed in the future. The so-called antagonists in the movie, the arachnids, or simply the hostile alien bugs, were actually not the aggressors. The movie just posed the critical question, who was the real villain? Was it the colonialist, expansionist humans, or the self-defending bugs? While the answer is for you to figure out, in this video we will take you through a detailed analysis of some of the deadly bugs from the iconic movie. Before we get into the explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin! Warrior Bug This bug was the most common soldier in the arachnid species army. Since the warrior bug could be produced much faster than the other species, they were used on every front as general-purpose infantry. However, they did lack the specialization that the other bugs had. These creatures were about 2 to 3 meters long and were able to camouflage and blend in with their surroundings. For instance, the desert warrior bugs were tan with black and yellow stripes, while during the Mars invasion they had small spikes all along their abdominal region. Their quick adaptability allowed the warrior bugs to survive various harsh conditions and even in vacuum, which meant that they could launch surprise attacks on the Federation forces by lurking in the vacuum of space to outflank them. The creature's front legs were shorter than their long rear legs, which helped them in primary movements. These bugs were fast and agile and were capable of climbing and burrowing through various surfaces. Their powerful pincer-like extensions could crush materials as hard as rock or metal. Their upper forelegs were like deadly swords that they used to attack their enemies. Given their tall stature, the bugs could use their slashing and stabbing moves to good effect in this way, destroying their opponents with ease. Their tough exoskeleton was hard to penetrate even with extreme firepower, and given the large number used in attack, they often managed to deal devastating blows to the human forces. These bugs were so durable that they could fight even after losing their limbs, and the only sure-shot way to kill them was to hit their nerve stem. When the Federation forces invaded Klendathu, the homeland of the Arachnids, the Battle of Klendathu saw them slaughter their attackers, causing massive casualties. They were more than just mindless troops, too, using clever tactics against the humans in the Second Bug War, fighting against the U.S. Federation who were using more advanced weaponry. The bugs lured the troopers to draw them into an ambush and even cleared minefields by triggering the bombs themselves. The warrior bugs were seen in almost every installment of Starship Troopers, from the movies to the video games. Their form differs in various versions, but their deadly, murderous nature remains the same. Brain Bug If the warrior bugs were the handy foot soldiers, the brain bugs were the minds behind them. These bugs were in command, the leaders of the other bugs in the colony. A unique species of arachnids, they were barely self-sufficient, dependent on the workers and warriors for their survival. They had bloated bodies, which mainly comprised a giant nervous system, and they couldn't really move around with their negligible, non-functional legs. However, they had a crucial role to play in the function of their colonies, guiding the arachnid forces at their disposal to destroy the human enemies. While the brain bugs were completely defenseless, they had a high-pitched scream that could burst the blood vessels in a human head if heard in close quarters. 
These slug-like bugs were rather obese and had to be carried around by the chariot bugs. They had fleshy mouths and numerous eyes on their heads, which resembled that of a spider. The sharp proboscis protruding from its mouth could be used to consume the knowledge from the minds of other beings, and their mouths were designed such that they could penetrate straight into the brain. All captured human soldiers were brought to the brain bug so that they could learn the secrets of their enemies. Now are we, Mr. Bug? That you regret messing with the mobile infantry, don't you, huh? Another special power of the brain bug was the intense telepathic powers that allowed it to control the colony. They were so important for the survival of the arachnids that they were always heavily guarded. If they ever came under attack, the bugs would cease attacking the enemy and would first ensure that the brain bug was taken to safety. However, if the brain bug was killed, the entire colony would go crazy and turn against each other, resulting in their defeat. The United Citizen Federation was initially unaware of the existence of this leader bug, and it was only after the disastrous Battle of Klandathu that they realized the threat they posed. The Arkelian Sand Beetle For a long time, the humans weren't aware that the Arkelian Sand Beetle was also a type of bug, initially regarding them as an entirely different species. It was only when they saw them alongside other bugs that they realized their true origins. Unlike some of the other deadly and intelligent bugs in this list, the Arkelian Sand Beetle is not that intimidating. They ranked pretty low in the bug hierarchy and were more of a lowly working class. Since these creatures had no ego and served as selfless members of society, the low status didn't bother them. Nevertheless, the beetle's ability to reproduce in extremely large numbers provided a crucial resource for the arachnids. Their specific function and purpose is never clearly mentioned, but it can be said that they are never seen directly engaging in combat. It is certain that these bugs were not fighters and could only serve in supporting roles during the war. In the early stages of the war, when the existence of these bugs was discovered, they didn't seem very important. Later, schools used them in dissection and experimentation purposes, helping the humans gain a better understanding of the bugs. The beetles were also called chariot bugs, as they were sometimes used to carry the brain bug around. The Arkelian sand beetles featured in the original Starship Troopers film and also in the comic strip titled Starship Troopers Dominant Species. There has even been mention of this particular bug in the video game called Starship Troopers Terrain Ascendancy. Dead body. Jungle Spider These beastly bugs derived their name from the earthly spiders with which they share a strong resemblance. The jungle spiders were probably one of the most lethal arachnid species that the humans had to fight, and they were strikingly intelligent as well. Their armored body was similar in physiological appearance to that of a crab, with a hard, tough shell protecting them. These creatures had eight eyes and could jump to great heights and over long distances, courtesy of their powerful legs. The pincers around their mouths were totally menacing and could deliver a fatal bite to their prey. What made these spiders such a serious threat was their ability to launch surprise attacks from the trees. Their agility ensured that the attacks were quick and effective, and the strategies adopted pointed to their smart thinking. The jungle spiders could shoot a sticky web-like substance from their abdomen, which would cocoon their enemies so they could be consumed later. Even without immediately killing the enemy, it would immobilize them. There were two types of this bug, one much larger than the other. I'm not happy! The larger jungle spider could endure severe weapon fire and was even deadlier than the usual variant. The spiders were often seen taking on the mobile infantry forces on the battlefield, the first encounter coming during the Tesca campaign. A single large jungle spider was seen fighting the Roughnecks, cocooning various troopers at speed. These bugs featured in the CGI animated series titled Roughnecks Starship Troopers Chronicles, a project for which Paul Verhoeven served as the executive producer. Kamikaze Ripplers these were a versatile species of alien bugs that were capable of flying and also swimming underwater. As you have probably guessed from the name, these bugs could launch suicidal kamikaze attacks as well. While they do share few similarities with the hopper bug, the ability to shoot spikes from their mouth makes ripplers even more special. You could say these were an explosive form of the hopper bug, and they could explode on cue like grenades, devastating the enemy forces. Their spikes contained corrosive venom that would burn flesh and could even destroy important pieces of equipment. This unique species of flying bug could launch a sudden attack after lurking underwater to ambush an enemy. They were equally effective in the air-to-air -air combat, and their winning strategies rendered their opponents helpless. One of the common tactics employed by the Kamikaze Ripplers was to gather around in large numbers and shoot spikes constantly at the enemy. 
These bugs featured in the Roughnecks Starship Troopers Chronicles series, in which the Arachnid army used their explosive nature to a good effect. They were more like aerial bombers who could strike from the skies and hit mobile infantry troops, catching them unaware. They had a crucial role to play in the Battle of Hesperus, even though it ended in a decisive Federation victory. The Kamikaze Ripplers were eventually killed off, but not before they caused heavy casualties for the Federation forces. Besides the TV series, these bugs were also seen in the 2005 Starship Troopers video game. They added a flying version of the bugs, as if the land variants weren't deadly enough. The Kamikaze Ripplers were easily one of the toughest adversaries that the humans had to face. Control Bug The control bugs were pretty small in size, but don't be fooled by their appearance, because they could cause severe damage to their enemies. These bugs would somehow take control of their human hosts after killing them and would manipulate their bodies to serve the arachnids as puppets. As per their appearance, in the Starship Troopers Chronicles, these bugs were pretty small in size, no larger than the size of a human hand. They would attach themselves to the spinal cord of their host and work as a telepathic conduit for the brain bugs. Individually, the control bugs were no grave threat and had almost zero offensive powers, but they could have a devastating impact in the long run. Also, their agility and small size meant that they weren't the easiest to hit with weapons. The film universe showed a different modus operandi for the control bugs. They would enter the human body through cavities like the mouth and then head straight for the brain to control the mind. It was hard to tell their impact initially because the victim would show no symptoms, and then their health would steadily deteriorate. Is this you're doing? It's a little, um, wonky, but it'll... No clear symptoms have been specified, but the victims were seen to sink to a generally unhealthy state, garnering skin colorations and giving off body odor. The control bugs exhibited total power over their hosts and later spread their offspring to further the process. Their attacks were coordinated and well-planned. For instance, when they attacked General Jack Shepard, the plan was to spread the infection to the leaders of the Federation, thereby hampering the army's fighting ability. After Shepard was infected, he adopted an elitist attitude, a far cry from the compassionate leader that he used to be. The idea to introduce such a bug that could corrode the minds of its host was a masterstroke, striking fear into the hearts of the audience. Tanker Bug you could say that the tanker bug was physically the most powerful type of bug in the arachnid horde. This giant beetle-like bug was built like a tank, hence the name. It was roughly 10 to 11 feet tall and twice as long. Tanker bugs had six sturdy legs that helped carry around their gigantic masses. Their bodies were covered with extremely tough plates that weren't easily penetrated, even with steady firing. Thus, they were very difficult to kill off and were able to obliterate entire platoons of the humans' mobile infantry. The tanker bugs were mostly used as armored assault units that could devastate the enemy armies with their swift destruction. Their massive bodies could crush and roll over human soldiers, and they could also spew a corrosive fluid on their enemies, simply melting the humans if it struck them. However, there was one chink in their armor. No, these bugs were not entirely invincible. There were slight gaps in between the armor plates, and these could be sought out to cause them some serious damage. We have also observed that the tanker bugs were vulnerable to heavy explosives. A very effective tactic in dealing with this monstrous bug was to somehow get on top of it and shoot the area behind its head. Through the hole, a grenade could be lodged inside, and after the soldier jumped off the bug, the creature would die from the explosion. These enormous bugs were seen in the Starship Troopers movie and also the TV series Starship Troopers Chronicles. Their sheer size and strength were pretty intimidating and helped us better understand the true power of the arachnids. Post, Whiskey O. Post, this is Roughneck 2-0 on... Hopper Bug The Hopper Bug was more like a warrior bug with wings, and these flying arachnids were great aerial attack support for the species. These bugs were mostly utilized for a quick hit-and-run tactics, usually attacking smaller units. The Hopper Bug was a swift flyer and effective fighter, but their weakness lay in their poor armor. They were pretty easy to kill and were susceptible to weapon fire. These creatures had a pincer at the rear end of their tail, which could be used to stab enemies during the attacks. They even decapitated their opponents by using their claws, but they had to fly away quickly before the others came in to help the fallen soldier. If you remember the attack on the Whiskey Outpost, where the Roughnecks were ambushed by thousands of bugs, you know the vicious nature of the Hopper Bug. 
There is this unforgettable scene where the bugs picked off the roughneck sergeant when they found him alone. The hopper bugs provided air support for this effort, with dozens attacking the Federation troops. They might not have been the hardest to kill, but their sudden attacks resulted in many casualties among the Federation forces. These bugs were seen in the original Starship Troopers movie and also the video game version that was released in 2005. Plasma Bug When the bugs attacked the Federation troops, one thing that was obvious was their unique coordination. One of the best examples of this is that of the Plasma Bug, who masked its weakness cleverly over the course of the planned attacks. This particular bug species served as the ground artillery and in-air defense roles when protecting their planet, and they were very effective in long-range bombardments. However, they were unable to move faster than the extremely low speed of less than 2 kilometers per hour. For this reason, they were always paired with packs of warrior bugs to ensure their security. The plasma bug is about 20 meters in height and 30 meters long. These massive bugs weighed over 7 tons and were capable of launching intense plasma blasts. The force of these blasts was so intense that they could fly beyond the orbit of the planet and hit interstellar targets. This force was strong enough to slice a starship in half and could deflect asteroids. Besides their awesome firepower, they also had the ability to spew hot plasma, much like the tanker bug, and they could deliver a powerful bite if an enemy got too close. They did have their shortcomings, and their strength became their weakness in some cases. The high-intensity plasma bursts could cause damage to the nearby arachnids if used in close quarters, and hence their only utility was in long-range attacks. Another vulnerability for these creatures was that when they were creating a plasma burst, they left open a wide blind spot from which they could be attacked. Despite such weaknesses, these carnivorous bugs were useful components in the defense system of the arachnids. Scorpion Bug Imagine a gigantic version of a scorpion. That is pretty much the appearance of a scorpion bug. These creatures were extremely aggressive and quite a handful for the human forces. Their main strength lay in their insane armoring that made them virtually bulletproof. The human's rifle fire and other regular weapons couldn't penetrate the thick armor, and this slow-moving giant could crush the enemy slowly but effectively. The scorpion bug stood at over 6 meters high and 13 meters long. Their mobility was restricted to about 10 kilometers per hour, but the plasma fire that they could shoot from their bodies traveled fast enough to devastate the enemy. They also had some deadly pincers to strike lethal blows at their opponents. Such a beastly structure wasn't bothered by its low agility, acting instead as a silent assassin that steadily crushed its opponents. This particular bug was seen in the movie Starship Troopers 3, Marauder, and was used during the Second Bug War. Later, it was also spotted in the Battle of Roku-san. However, the lack of budget meant that this bug was entirely controlled by puppeteers, and only the Sting Blast was animated. We wish this fierce fighter was better portrayed, but nevertheless, its appearance did add some excitement to the plot. Bombardier Bug Here you have a bug that works pretty much like a grenade. The Bombardier Bug could be hurled at the enemy from an unknown source, and it would self-destruct to cause grave damage to the opponent. Also referred to as the Kamikaze Bombardier, this bug was seen in two different states, the open self-destructive state and the closed state in which it was fired. This was the smallest bug among the various species seen in the Starship Troopers movie series. They were only about 10 to 15 centimeters long, an effective weapon that could hit the enemy even when they thought they were safe in their trenches. One of the first appearances of the Bombardier Bug came during the Battle of Rokusan. The bugs attacked the military assistance base, and prior to their attack, the Bombardier Bugs were launched into the human trenches. This caused the troopers to panic, a truly chaotic moment for their forces. The subsequent explosions were strong enough to cause significant damage, proving that it was quite handy for the other bugs to have such a living grenade-like specimen in their arsenal. We saw this particular bug in Starship Troopers 3 Marauder, and the idea was probably inspired by a real-life bug known as a pill bug, which can roll into a ball. In the game version, these bugs would detonate near the player and reduce their life force. God Bug We saw this supreme bug in both the sequels and the original Starship Troopers movie. Not much has been said about the origin of the mighty God Bug, and even the United Citizens Federation had no clue about its existence. It was only after a brain bug was captured that they got a whiff of a supreme one amongst the arachnids. The bug was a gigantic creature which was deep rooted into the surface of the planet where it was launched. Underneath the surface, the God Bug had numerous appendages, which it could use cleverly to attack unsuspecting prey. Hello, be thy name. 
The god bug also created fissures all over the planet, and anyone who stepped into one of these was a goner. It is the supreme leader among the arachnids, and we don't know for sure whether there were more than one of these creatures. It did have a few similarities with the brain bug, but it was definitely higher up in the hierarchy. It had a mouth covered in tentacles that could be used to consume the knowledge and memories of other organisms, just like the brain bug. The god bug was called Beheme Coatl, and it could extend its head from the ground if required. When the starship crashed into planet OM-1, they realized that a large part of the planet was actually the god bug. In the movies Starship Troopers 2 and 3, we saw a few examples of the might of the god bug as it unleashed the armies of warrior bugs and others onto the Federation forces. Queen Bug The Queen Bug was yet another extremely intelligent bug amidst the arachnids that acted in a leadership role. High in the rankings of the bugs, the queen of the colony had the important responsibility of procreation. Her existence was kept a secret from the Federation because she was so critical to the safety and existence of their entire species. There could be multiple queens across the galaxy, and whether some remained after the bug's defeat was unknown. It is true that the warrior bugs were also able to reproduce, and so it is likely that the queen produced deadlier bugs like the plasma grenadier bug and chaser bugs, and that she could produce faster than the warriors. She could lay as many as 1,800 eggs per day. One queen bug was a crucial character in the Starship Troopers novel, and later we saw her in the Roughneck Starship Troopers Chronicles in the animated and game versions. Forgive me if I don't bow, your majesty. There have been cases where the other bugs have killed the queen bug rather than allow her to be captured by the troopers. As seen in the Starship Troopers Chronicles, the queen bug had a large beak-like mouth and a crowned head, somewhat like a warrior bug. She also had two larger limbs and two smaller ones and six tiny legs to move around on. The queen bug has been shown to be pretty intelligent, and there have been situations where she held hostages in order to protect herself. She was always heavily guarded, with the royal guard bug in charge of her protection. The idea to introduce such a motherly figure among the bugs was a smart one, opening up a huge number of new storylines and mythology to explore. <laughs> Xander Barkalow We thought we would include one entry that was a little different on the list, a change of flavor for you amidst all the bug talk. Xander Barkalow was not one of the arachnids, at least not initially and in fact, he was a pilot for the United Citizens Federation. What are you doing here? I'm the guy who's gonna teach you to fly this crate. He was a lieutenant on board the Roger Young until it was destroyed. From the first film, we know Johnny Rico as the protagonist, and Barcolo was his rival, the two competing for the attentions of Carmen Ibanez. Barcolo later trained Ibanez on that spaceship, and things were fine until they crashed into Planet P. Their spaceship was hit by a plasma burst, and Xander and Carmen were forced to abandon ship after the crash. South 42 East 118 situation is... I repeat, South 42 East 118. They were immediately attacked by a horde of warrior bugs, but they fought them bravely. However, soon they were stabbed and dragged down, and a brain bug impaled Xander in order to consume his brain. Wait, we did promise a twist. Xander? Xander. No longer exists. Xander was transformed into a bug later, becoming the troublesome imposter bug. Can't you read the signs? No trespassing! Imposter bug. What is an imposter bug, we hear you ask? This species was created when nurse or spiders injected arachnid flux larvae with Xander's blood. They were roughly the same size and shape as a human, and they could compact their bodies, allowing them to fit inside the stolen power suits. They could then infiltrate the enemy lines and cause some serious damage. The fast and lethal imposter bug was first seen during the Klendathu campaign, when the Roughnecks were attacked by these deadly creatures. They proved to be a serious threat to the troops, but despite their speed, a desperate soldier was able to outrun them. Rico, Xander, evac, now! Xander! It's too late for me. Doc can help you! Watching Xander spawn the imposter bug was quite a moving experience, using a leading character to procreate a deadly bug that went on to be quite a trouble for the Federation. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.